Hello, welcome to the Marzi Show podcast. This is purely in audio form, and I'm doing this because I haven't done one for a while. I think the last one was with Sean over a year ago, and people are kind of new here. There's a whole bunch of new people, and they have expressed that they enjoy my voice, so I thought I'd just put out a podcast episode, and I could talk about the direction of the channel. Uh, like becoming a drama channel, how I find videos, what I do, all that kind of stuff. It's not really a get to know me thing, it is generally like a podcast episode. I don't know how long this will be though. These are largely unedited. Uh, I don't have any notes for this unfortunately. But I kind of wanted to talk about becoming a drama channel. Now, I know that, as I said, a whole bunch of people have found me through that, through my Creepshow Art videos. Um, and I have expressed previously in multiple places that I won't do things that I'm not interested in. Uh, and how I came across Gripshaw Art was, uh, interesting, I guess. I wasn't going to cover it for quite a while. I'm like, I haven't seen her videos, which I say in like the first few videos that like, I haven't seen her videos, you know, even the... Odess uh, voice comparison, I'm like, I don't know what I'm comparing because I haven't heard uh, Creepshow's voice, you know? So, that was a bit of a thing that I wasn't too sure about. I don't exactly recall why I started going into it. I know that there was a video uh, kind of made by a few people. There were a few videos, actually. I have also stated that I haven't seen Emily Artful's video. I wasn't too into it, I suppose. I wasn't, like, deep into the creep show art thing. But I was kind of interested because everything kind of seems to be a branch of something else. So creep show art, to me, I think, falls into the Goon Squad. And so I have covered Edward's Generation before, and I believe he's part of the Goon Squad as well. So they kind of tie in, and I've covered Rebzilla, he was friends with Creepshow, they kind of tie in. So everything kind of branches off from each other. Uh, but I wanted to kind of go into it, and I kept seeing long videos. I think that's kind of why I did it, because I kept seeing long videos, and I'm like, I should be able to explain this in decent detail without making like a half an hour long video. I don't recall what the first video was. Uh, I know that I did Creepshow Art was exposed by her editor and sibling. I think that was the second video. Um, yeah, I don't know what the first video was actually. I'm just gonna actually look it up on my phone. So that should give me context. Uh, but yeah, I I didn't want to go too in depth with it because I felt like I'd just be regurgitating what other people had said, which isn't what I wanted to do. You know, that's not the point. The point was that I wanted uh, my channel to kind of either be a way for people to get the news quicker or to have a perspective that they haven't had before. That was the, that's the whole plan of it. My first Creep Show Art video was uh, Creep Show Art Drama Exposes a Bigger Issue. There you go. So that was definitely uh, that was about I'm not sure what that was about actually. Um, I, yeah. Um, I guess the description reads Creepshow has been exposed via a local thread for both problematic things such as slurs, talking nastily behind her friend's back, and having fights with herself to boost her own channel. This video gives a bit of a breakdown on the Creepshow art drama, in my opinion. I wish I had a better memory because I don't exactly remember what that video is about. What is the bigger issue? I don't recall. Um. I don't think that I would have 
really going and just regurgitated stuff. Um, I know that I had a point in making that video. Don't recall what it is right now. My memory's not the best. Um, why if people say, oh, you said such and such in another video, I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, like, I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember things too well. And then I back that up by Crabtronite Exposed by sibling and editor. That is more self-explanatory because I remember that a bit. I know that she dots her sibling and her editor, Enbird, who made a video. I have actually seen that video. And then after that, I went um, and I made another Edwin's Generation video. So I came across Edwin during the Poppy and Marzago thing. There's a whole kind of thing, I think, if you look back a bit. Um, because Reptilla tried to kind of use that against me and said that I was jealous of Edwin, which I wasn't. Um, Reptilla and I had covered Poppy and Marzago for quite a while and then Edwin decided to jump on it for the lawsuit and Rap gave him information to my knowledge um, and so they kind of boosted each other and I just thought that given Rap and I had covered it for so long that it was a bit unfair which in hindsight I don't really have uh, a leg to stand on there because YouTube is YouTube people cover whatever but it was years ago now and I have changed my approach and everything I've learned from that and then I covered mini lad then I covered Edwin again and then I did six videos in a row of creep show art which was not planned at all uh mini lad is interesting uh so as I said I only generally cover things that I'm kind of interested in or whatever like I won't go out of the out of my way sorry to make videos about like the beauty community because i don't watch that stuff i don't want to insert myself into a situation a situation i have no idea about uh mini lad is one of the very few youtubers that i actually watch or watched sorry that i watched at the time that got involved in controversy uh so that was kind of how that came about and I've tried to cover it since because it's on my radar because I used to watch his content. So that's where Mini Lad comes into it. Although there were instances where I did try to kind of jump in on things. And I look back at those videos and I, I'm not confused. I just don't really like them. I'll like name some of them for you. Like, James Charles isn't sorry, that's from two years ago. It's about James Charles's apology video. I've never seen a James Charles video. I don't exactly recall uh, how I even came across that video. I don't recall watching the apology that he made. Maybe I did, I don't know. As I said, memory's not the best. That video probably explains more about how I got there. Uh... I made a video about Anision. I've made a few videos about Anision because I, I find that interesting how um, he's so crucified, which, given what's been said and stuff, is justified, uh, or what's been alleged, should I say, uh, is justified. But there were instances like this video from two years ago, Anision protected by YouTube. I think that's about like how. He was in so much trouble but he was still monetized or he was able to like do false copyright claims but still have his channel even though he did things that went against like terms of service that's where that comes into it jacqueline's hill lipstick nightmare yeah as i said i i have no interest in the beauty community this is two years ago though this isn't like now 2021 the video, if you go to my channel, I think it's like the Muzzy Show in 2021. I talk about kind of what I was going to do or try and do, which is where I'm at. Uh, I wanted to try and do drama stuff because I often, they say criticize, but I was, I was quite under the impression that commentary channels and stuff like that, like 
I thought that what they did was kind of, I suppose, easy in a way. Uh, and so I wanted to get a better perspective and try to do it myself, put myself in their shoes so that I could get a better understanding of what I am potentially criticizing in the future. If I criticize the commentary channel, I kind of understand a little bit more like what the research process is and stuff like that. I did the dark side of Lana Del Rey. I'm very interested in Lana Del Rey. Uh, BTS versus Australian media, that was something that happened to you. And then I did a video about Alinity. I've never seen an Alinity stream. Uh, Alinity should be banned for this year. I assume that was like the cat stuff, you know, uh, which circulated. And I mean, I still stick by that. And then I decided that I would start a series called Deep Dive, where I did the history of I'm Alex, which was a really interesting video. I don't agree with what Alex did in the Slazo situation. If you don't know, I'd suggest looking into it. Uh, and so I decided to look into his past and what existed and stuff. And I found a whole bunch of stuff. Um, none of it's really controversial. There's some off stuff, but none of it's controversial to my knowledge. Deep dive episode one. There's never been a second episode. I've tried to look into a few other people because there has been some suggestions in that comment section of people to kind of deep dive but a lot of people don't have an accessible history like Alex did at the time I did a video about Brooke Houts because that was popular at the time I saw the footage that was revolving around but I didn't see I haven't seen any of the content actually uh, I did a video about Venus Angelic, which I've been meaning to do a follow-up of because she still posts and I'm still quite kind of interested in that stuff. Uh, that's a, that's about it. I did, um, did a few other things. Generally, everything's kind of been follow-ups since, apart from the creep show art stuff. I think I did a follow-up for Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Uh... And I did follow up for Clever Say some more. This channel was really gonna just be um, me. That, that's the whole point. There's there's unlisted videos now um, of my music that I used to make. The first like three or four uploads I think on this channel are my music that I used to make. And I was kind of like I just wanted to get them out to a kind of bigger platform. I think it's always been the Marcy Show though. I think I've always stuck with that name. But I wanted to get it out there a bit more because um, I was stuck with like SoundCloud and Bandcamp and I was like, putting them on YouTube would kind of be a thing, you know, that would be more easily accessible for people if they want to check out my music. Uh, they're unlisted. I don't know what to tell you, I guess. If you want to find them. You can. Probably not through the unlisted bit, but they they do exist uh, on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. I know I haven't given you the name, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I see um see a whole bunch of drama go on and I'm like, will I or won't I cover it? Uh and it's always just like yes or no, obviously. That's an obvious thing. But I don't really know what makes something cov coverable and what doesn't to me. I know that there's things that I won't touch. Um, I don't like to go near things that are like uh, abuse or assault or something. For a few reasons. Mainly because I don't agree with profiting off that. It's also not my story to tell. Uh, and I just be regurgitating things other people have said and point in that is just kind of next to none because what else am I adding to the table, you know? Uh, in the case of Creep Show Art, the Odessa stuff was really interesting. There was like kind of new stuff every few days there, which was interesting. I enjoyed keeping people 
informed about that and just putting the information out there. And then the DeviantArt rabbit hole. That was interesting. I feel like I, prob I probably explained it in my video, but uh, I spent like 15 to 20 hours researching that and I had like 15 or 20 tabs open most of that time. And I was going any which way. I think I should probably actually just talk a bit about the research process because it was interesting. I, I previously had spent quite a long time researching Poppy and Mars Argo. I have a channel dedicated to it. Uh, I spent a long time on the Wayback Machine looking up that stuff. Like, and by a long time, I mean probably like literally over a hundred hours just on the Wayback Machine researching. So this was something that I could try my hand at, and the Wayback Machine didn't really come in handy much, except for a deleted third post at one stage. Uh, a lot of it just wasn't archived. Like the Millie Fuel stuff, that account I don't think was archived. There are other archive sites, like I found one bit of uh, information, like for artist confessions that um, Ray Kamari made, that was saved on uh, archive.today instead. Who knows why, who knows who's saving that in like 2011. Sorry, I think that was actually 2014, but still, who knows who decides to save this stuff. But it was interesting. So a couple of people I think are kind of like, like how'd you do this? Like so confusing. And I said, just grab a timeline or figure out a brief timeline and then fill in the blanks. So what I did for that video was, I went and I watched um, Ray Kamari's video. That's not their name on YouTube, but just to make it make sense. Ray Kamari. I watched their video. They had a brief timeline of what they discussed. They said um, that they alleged that Creepshow had done such and such in such and such a time. So I grabbed a Google Doc and wrote a bit down. And then I'm like, okay, so we have this year, roughly, and it happened on DeviantArt. Blah, blah, blah. There's this person called So Fine. So So Fine still exists go off that then we can find posts around that time put two and two together there and then we have a google drive called shannon 2011 which has a bunch of messages uh which has like with millie fuel so that was the name that i went off try to find distance of that and then we had we had millie fuel we had the year, we had so fine, so that's three ticks in the, I guess, authenticity scale, if you want to call it that. And then those bits and pieces, uh, like the Encyclopedia Dramatica article, that existed, that had a lot, um, but mainly surrounding Ray Kamari, uh, which was interesting because that definitely provided a lot of kind of context I suppose especially for the drama that was going on in 2011 because although there were uh, deleted accounts and stuff for some reason DeviantArt has this thing where if someone so so fine has a couple of journal posts journal entries and uh a few things were linked that were like Ray Kamari's posts, although Ray Kamari's accounts were deleted, yet, though they were linked, uh, the posts still existed, and I have never seen so many deleted accounts, just on DeviantArt alone, not even just Ray Kamari. <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, so, there were a lot of dead ends, and there was a lot of information that I didn't end up putting in the video, because... I didn't think that it really made sense to the narrative. I mean, I could have just made a whole video about Ray Kamari, but that wasn't the point. The point was to try and find evidence of it being show art like they had alleged. And so, yeah, it's deep in that DeviantArt rabbit hole for quite a while. Uh, a lot of it was spent just 
going through posts and then going through timelines. I would generally watch maybe a minute or two of the video, then write something down and then try and cross-reference it on DeviantArt. There was a period where I was on Tumblr and just going through Tumblr, uh, just trying to find some of these sites or whatever that were mentioned, like Artist Confessions. Artist Confessions wasn't online for very long. Um, and I think one of them, maybe it was Artist Confessions, was like taken over and I think it was like to stop bullying or something. Ray Kamari definitely wasn't innocent and all that. Uh, but as I said, the point of that video was not to crucify Ray Kamari. It was to try and make a connection between what Ray Kamari had said and what they alleged uh, Creep Show Art had done. Now, spoiler warning if you haven't seen those videos. Uh, I found no evidence of Shannon on DeviantArt in 2011. So how I came across what I came across was there were a few breadcrumbs, as I say. And so what happened with that was that there were some usernames here and there that maybe commented on posts in 2011 or were in screenshots that were posted or something like that. And sometimes, when I followed those breadcrumbs, I found active accounts because people would be like, oh, I've moved to such and such an account. And then maybe in their about section, they had a link to a Tumblr. And then the Tumblr's like, oh, I've moved to such and such a Tumblr account. And then they haven't been active for a while. And so then just search that username. Uh, in Google and hope that they still use that username. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, sometimes it's a dead end, and sometimes you find a Tumblr that is still being used. So, breadcrumbs were really helpful. I think I reached out to five or six people, I think. Interesting, because as I said in my video, none of them had ever heard of, uh, well, none of them had ever heard of someone called Shannon in the DeviantArt community in 2011. I think only one of them had heard of Ray Kamari and Millie Fuel. So for a while there, although I could uh, confirm Millie Fuel's existence, I was a bit confused about their, uh, their part in all that because if there's all these people that were like around then given it was a decade ago but if there were all those people around then and no one knew the name it seemed a bit strange it's like how important were they i don't know how long the millie fuel account lasted or anything like that uh but i did end up finding who millie fuel was or at least someone who said they were millie fuel which I have no reason to not believe them. Uh, the thing of them saying that they were Millifield was from last year. I have no reason to make it up. Uh, and I like, cross-referenced the photo with a YouTube video I found. Because I found a YouTube video. For some reason, the search results on my laptop were different to what I was doing the research on on my computer, which is what I'm recording this on. And so I found a YouTube video for Millie Fuel from 2011. It was the only video as for a Rolliana contest. And so all those puzzle pieces just kind of came together, luckily enough. Uh, there's connection for that person who said they were Millie Fuel to be Millie Fuel. I mean, there's the photos side by side. Uh, I did think though that when I found Millie Fuel, like the YouTube video, I was like, well, I mean, yay, I found them, you know, and I thought that there was a chance that it was Shannon, because the person had a lisp, Shannon had a, or has a lisp, um, and lisps can change in, in a decade. Uh, I did say that I'm not very good at telling people's ages from, like, photos or videos so I wasn't sure if that person 
roughly the right age. I found somewhere and I don't know if it was true and I didn't include it in my video, but I saw somewhere that there was a forum post that had the age of the poster and it said that uh Millie Fuel was twenty eight right now and that's the same age as show up so that was kind of interesting so that would mean that the person in the video if that's to be believed was 17 slash 18 which would be the age that they would have needed to have been if they were shannon which they weren't a whole bunch of coincidental stuff uh it seemed that ray kamari kind of had a bit of a history of doing stuff like that in 2011 and that's generally well the posts were about the starting stuff um they weren't really dishing out false accusations, I don't think, in 2011. It was more that they were just starting drama for the sake of it, really. Which would be seen as the same thing, I suppose. Not on a technicality, though. But I do hope that Ray Kamari comes back and says something and doesn't just leave it like that forever, you know. Uh, someone did say that they were a bit suspicious when they deleted the video and their follow-up video, Taking Time Away, had comments turned off, which I thought was a bit strange. Uh, but I definitely... I definitely was always under the impression that it was true until it was proven that it wasn't, you know, because uh, support... Is a thing, you know, support's a big thing. And I feel like if you're just immediately doubting someone because, oh, it doesn't sound true or something, that just isn't a good way to go. Because, uh, I think there's a saying that something like, uh, I'd rather, um, believe a victim that turned out to be a lie than not believe a victim at all something like that i don't know but i definitely kind of have that perspective uh i was obviously a bit skeptical i was kind of hoping actually that it was true and that i could like kind of break the story you know but it turned out that to the best of my knowledge that it wasn't true uh I was going to post on Reddit about it. I posted the initial video script or an edited version of that to to Reddit, but I decided not to post about how like dangerous false accusations can be because I know that um that the Reddit community for Creepshow Art is definitely just kind of like a hate mob and that they just kind of trying to crucify her as much as they can. I saw a post today that was saying that um another user was a sock puppet account and I know that they're not, but I guess I just I don't really feel like I can say, hey, they're not, you know. Um someone who's been in my comment section actually. Uh, and has been saying some stuff. They've never like they've never I don't think they've ever defended Shannon in my comment section. I've never seen them defend Shannon. They've said things, I think, that are just kind of nothing to do with really anything that a video I've made is about, you know. I think that they want awareness for what they've been through. Um, though it doesn't all seem to kind of really make sense. Um, I'm not going to say who they are. I'm also not going to make a video about it. But... I guess the reason why there hasn't been a video this week so far outside of this is because nothing's really caught my eye. I know that James Charles made an apology video that said not interested in the beauty community. Um, a lot of drama kind of comes from the beauty community. But yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, if Shane Dawson comes back, I could maybe make a video about that because I, I used to watch him. Watch his... Uh, conspiracy theory videos um i watched the like jake paul series and stuff like that before everything came out i guess that's kind of down to how specific i am about who i watch on youtube because i am very picky um 
I generally watch um generally watch the Sidemen. I think the Sidemen are like the most my most viewed channel and the members like Zerka and Mini Minter and Big Star One Two Three and KSI and Inger and those people. They're generally who I watch the most. I watch a bit of the Apex Hound. I watch some gaming channels. I watch PewDiePie. Um, not as much as I used to, but still do occasionally. Uh, yeah, I'm very particular with with who I watch. I definitely go through phases. But in saying that, I have um, made a video about the Genoskians because that was something I was interested in at one stage. The first channel I think I ever subscribed to. I think I subscribed to like a Dance Academy fan account before that, but yeah. Outside of that, the first real channel I subscribed to in like 2012, I think. There's a way you can check that. The way that you can check who you subscribe to and when. Uh, if you're curious, you can look it up. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't like deliberately not watch problematic people I just I just kind of have a just have an interest in in what I watch I guess I watch uh retro future as well uh I watch some pokemon stuff I watch some repairing stuff I watch a little bit of everything except the beauty community really uh and so yeah I mean, it'd be easier for me content-wise if I watched more problem many people because then I'd know what I was talking about and I feel like I could talk about them. But that's just not how it is. Although I do sometimes find things that are interesting. Uh, I found the frivolous Fox ASMR thing interesting. I came across that on Twitter, I believe. Uh, the ASMR community is interesting. I haven't really had much of an interest in it since... Cleverest died, but yeah, I would generally like go through Reddit and go through like YouTube drama or something and just see what people are talking about. Should probably find some more subreddits actually. Generally, see what people are talking about, what they're saying. If there's anything that sounds interesting that could kind of make a video, I suppose. But generally, um, generally, there isn't, you know. So that's why videos aren't to comment on this channel although the last two weeks would have been really good and really big most successful uh few weeks i think i've ever had on youtube i've been doing youtube for five years started in 2016 uh not on this channel not on my now main channel on a different channel so yeah it's been really nice but i promised myself that I wouldn't force content, and so that's what I'm doing, and that's why the video is a bit hit and miss time wise. But I'll find something interesting, and I feel like you, the viewer, can tell when I'm not interested in what I'm making, which is kind of important. Maybe you could watch old videos and tell they don't really care about some of the stuff, but yeah, that's that's a problem for past me, really. Yeah, I do definitely have an interest in lost media. I have a video that I that I researched earlier this year called like 20 Lost Australian TV shows and I'd be really interested to do that uh, but I don't know where it would fit I feel like this channel is now a really a place for that kind of stuff unfortunately and the main channel is maybe a place for that I don't know but yeah I definitely really enjoy Lost Media that's another um, genre of YouTube that I enjoy watching blame it on Jorge Big influence on me. Thanks for listening. Sorry, I um, I cut out me coughing. That's why it sounded a bit strange. Don't do nothing for some reason. But yeah, thanks for listening. Hopefully, you do enjoy this. Uh, if you want to guess next time, let me know. If you want me to cover a certain something? Also, let me know. I'm here to talk about anything, really, almost anything. There is a podcast i'll leave it in the description i just did the arrow thing to point down in the description but this is audio so doing a visual thing in audio format is not the best idea 
But in the description, there is a link to a Kiwi and Scooter podcast where if you want to know more about me and find out more about me, it's from a couple of years ago now, but I think it's the only podcast I've ever been on personally that they like ask me about me. But yeah, if you want to learn about me, then it's the way to go. Uh, not the setup I have now. I had the laptop on a heater, I think, to try and get like height for that. So that was something. Yeah. Let's listen. <laughs>